Good morning. Welcome to the Bar and Sunday Morning Services. Thank you so much for being with me. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. You can get involved in today's discussion, discussion right now by calling 1-800-411-2663, 800 411 bond. You can also email church at bondinfo.org, church at bondinfo.org, and put your name in town, name in town, name in town, all your emails. And again, happy Father's Day out there and in here as well. Happy Father's Day again. Um, I want to give you a few things about what's been said about fathers and the way fathers are treated on Father's Day. Uh, if this was Mother's Day, the media would be packed right now. Everybody would be here, you know, get ready to go out and celebrate uh, uh, Mama's Day. But on Father's Day, it's like barely nothing, you know. A few people mentioned it, but not a big deal. Barack Obama said about Father's Day, um, let's see here. Uh, oh, President Obama said that Father's Day is a forgotten holiday. But you won't catch him saying it around his wife anymore. Obama said that during a, uh, a luncheon with four campaign supporters in Washington, D.C. on Friday, uh, Mr. Obama told a group that people make a bigger deal out of mother, Mother's Day than the upcoming holiday for fathers on Sunday. Um, he went on to say, there was one year that I got a tie or something, and I said, why is it that everybody made a big deal about Mother's Day and Father's Day seemed to be the, the uh, forgotten holiday? And Mr. Obama said, and Michelle looked at me and she said, let me tell you, let me tell you what, every day is Father's Day. You're always getting a treat. <laughs> so the president won't be asking her that anymore. Isn't that something? She yelled at him. Don't be asking me that. You'll always get a treat. And so he won't ask her about Father Day anymore. Yes, Chrissy? On my computer, I have MSN.com. Um, we have um, a, an ad that comes up on the right-hand side that says, Join Michelle in wishing um, Barack uh, a happy Father's Day. Yeah. And I've been trying to get that ad off for about three days now. I just find it offensive, intrusive, you know, into my life that I have to have that on there. And I, I can't seem to get it off. But So she hasn't exactly forgotten her husband because it's good for a campaign. Yeah. But behind closed doors is a different story. Um, on my radio show, my producer pulled some sound bites from uh, Father's Day commercials. Father's Day commercials. And I just want to give you a few of those to show the difference between the way they treat mothers and the way they treat fathers. Uh, this is from uh, Eatable Arrangements. Their commercial said, uh, moms mean everything. And this is, a, let me see what they say about father. And this is, uh, so on Mother's Day, they ran this ad. It says, moms mean everything. On Father's Day, they ran an ad that says, there's no mention of why fathers are good or important. So they talk about chocolate candy and stuff on Father's Day, but they don't mention why fathers are important at all. It seems as though the chocolate candy is more important than the father. But on the Mother's Day, they ran the very same ad, and it talks about how mothers are more important uh, mothers mean more important than anything. Here's one from Hallmarks. It's, uh, on Mother's Day, they ran this ad that said, thank the woman who inspired your first word. And what did Hallmarks say about men? Oh, here's what, here's what they said about Father's Day. Um, they ran an ad that had a dad receive a card from, uh, receive a card that played MC Hammer's Can't Touch This. <laughs> so
So when you see the ad, you see the family gather around the breakfast table or whatever, and the two boys give this card to their father and say, Happy Father Day. The father op opened his card up, and the music uh, started to play Hammer Time, Can't Touch This. And then the father goes into his imagination, and he is at the table. He's dancing in, like, Hammer Time, looking like an idiot in front of his kids. And they're like, Father, Dad, Dad, come back. And uh, isn't that amazing? The father looking stupid. Can't touch this. <laughs> It's amazing to me that these people play, you know, these commercials like this. I guess times are hard and you need the money. Uh, one other of each. This is from sinflowers.com. And it's, the ad says, your mother brought you into this world. You owe your mother big time. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, and this one is from Orville Rockin' Red, Rittenbarker. Red, red Barker popcorn. Yeah, you, you, you eat that popcorn? I heard this popcorn. Rittenbarker popcorn. It, uh, it explained that the father, oh, I know that, I remember this one. The father walks into... Uh, the house and sees his daughter having a tea party, his little girl having a tea party with popcorn. And she says to the father, you can't have any unless you dress like a girl. <laughs> the father and the son walks in. And this is on Father's Day. And he, the little girl says the fa to the father, you can't have any unless you dress like a, dresses like a girl. And so the father and the son dress up like a girl. The father like a woman and the girl like the boy, the, little, the brother like a, uh, a girl and sit to have tea, uh, tea with his daughter and have popcorn. Isn't that amazing? Is this me or what? I'm tripping. What do you think about this? Well, I've seen a lot of changes in the commercial uh, towards making, uh, <laughs> you know, changing the image of uh, at one time the woman was shown as uh, the weak, uh, not very, you know, dim-witted. Right, and blonde and blue-eyed. the other way around. Mm -hmm. And how you feel about that? I don't like it. <laughs> you don't like it? No, I, I, I don't, don't think, either. I don't think either one was an accurate uh, right. uh, depiction. Right. Children need both parents, and they need to respect both parents. Mm -hmm. And so by making one parent look like an idiot and the other one look smart, it's not good either way. Because they need to, they need a good image of both parents. This is absolutely out of control. I just want to give you one other. Um, um, oh, where's that one I really thought was something else? Uh, Kelly, what's that one where the mother is saying, like me, love me? Don't forget, huh? That's a Hallmark? <laughs> Tell mom. Is it on this list? Mm -hmm. Tell mom. Mom means everything your mother brought you in the world. Hallmark commercial. You'll fly. I never forget how my mother has been there for me. Uh, thank the woman who inspired me. Mom kisses could fix everything. Almost everything. Uh, one last about the men, and then I'll uh, move on with this. Uh, this is from, uh, uh, oh, oh, here's one. This is from Dairy Queen, Dairy Queen, the ice cream thing. The father is going to Dairy Queen, and he has this little baby, and one of those little things that you put the baby in, and you put the thing around your shoulder, and you can carry the baby. And so they go to Dairy Queen for Father's Day, and the father is eating his brazot. It's a blizzard. Blizzard. It's a blizzard ice cream. And the kid is uh, attached to the, his stomach in a carrier. The, kids try, the kid tries to get the food, and then the father would not give it to him, so he kicked the father into growing <laughs> on Father's Day.
Happy Father's Day, huh? Um, do you sometimes wonder why this is happening like this? Why is this happening? There's a reason for this. Why is this happening? Yes, sir. You know, it's, um, these companies have already been made aware of what they're doing. These companies Robert, have already been made Robert, aware of what they're doing. Robert, you got to come out of your trance and pay attention. So it's, it's not like um, they don't know, you know, that they're just having fun. They disguise a lot of this stuff for just having fun and, uh, you know, making people laugh. But they've been warned about it, so it's not like they're ignorant of what they're doing right. or, they're, or that they just don't understand the ramifications. Because they've been explained. A lot of groups are after them about it, you know, about what they do, but they just keep doing it anyway. So there must be an agenda. Yes, there is. This is absolutely my, it's so open too. It is mind blowing to me. Yes, ma'am. Yes. I noticed that a lot of the kids comic books, they make the fathers look like fools. Yeah. The mother are kind of wise, they're onto the kids, but the father is always fool, a fool. And they're always disrespecting the parents in the comics also. Just imagine that these kids are gonna grow up, if this is not corrected, they're gonna grow up totally disrespecting their fathers. And just think what the world is going to become if we don't stop this. If we absolutely don't stop it. it we are in trouble. Find your rock, buy a rock, and hide behind it. <laughs> you know, the Bible says one day we're going to have to hide behind a rock. Get your rock and hide behind it. Yes, Christy? Um, getting back to that blizzard. Yeah. The dad goes into an ice cream store. And he's in there, and he's eating all the ice cream, and he doesn't give his son any of the ice cream. Well, I mean, what's all that about? I mean, that just sounds like um, well, it's supposed to be. Toddler. It's supposed. He can still kick you in the groin. It's supposed to be a treat for the father, so he just buys an ice cream cone, and they, I believe, they're walking out of the shop, the store, and that's when the baby started trying to reach for it, and the father like hold back a little bit, and he kicks him. That's right, Kelly. He kicks him in the groin. So you say. I'd kick him. You'll kick him? Mm -hmm. uh, even on Father's Day? A any day of the week. <laughs> I mean, and I've actually seen that happen with dads where all they care about is giving themselves the, the treats, and they, they, they sometimes, they don't even think about the kids. But this is on Father's Day when the, when the, the kid is treating the father. I, the kid's nine months old. The kid is not treating the father. But it's, it's a pretense. I, 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 You'll I, kick him. I, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, with, poor with, with father. If ever I needed you, Lord, I need you now. That's amazing. Yes, Herman. Oh, one moment. I'm sorry. Wait till the mic get there. Okay. Um, so I, I think I didn't catch the last part of the uh, Chris. She said uh, a father buying ice cream for himself and not the kid, too. I kick him as well. Right. But I think, you know, one thing you have to realize is that it's the people that are making these commercials. I mean, they have an agenda, they have a message. Also, the fact that the kid is kicking him in the groin, that's, I mean, that's like the worst thing that you could do to a guy. So, I mean, the, just the, the image of that being kicked in the, in the groin and being kind of the butt of the joke, that's how they, they demean dads. You see a lot of commercials like that where they be, be little fathers. Yeah, and if, when you see the commercial, the father really looks silly. It makes him look non-father-like. Make it look dumb. You get that image. And a lot, uh, and, 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 you know, young people are seeing those same images. And the impact that it's having on them is a little different than it would have on me because I know better. But the impact, also a lot of people are unconscious and they don't know that they're unconscious. And they're getting this image too and don't realize it. You, you know, a lot of adults don't realize the image that they're getting. This is some serious stuff. I know it seems funny. But it's some serious stuff. Yes. Like Hold on a minute. Yeah, wait for them. Yes, I'd like to ask Christine if um, the male children, when they disagree with the <laughs> mother, can they punch and kick her too? What? When the male children disagree with the mother. Oh. Uh, oh yeah. Are you they have allowed to punch and kick the mother now? This is totally different. This is a little baby. Of course. <laughs> eat the ice cream and the dad's not giving him any ice cream. He doesn't understand that it's Father's Day and this is a, I mean. I know, but the people who made the commercial made it happen. The kid didn't do it. The, the adults did it. 
Right. The kid didn't didn't. Do, I, I I understand what you're saying, Jesse. But I'm just saying that from a mother's point of view, I mean, I, I would not be eating a treat in front of my child and not. First of all, they would get the treat first if, if we were going to go to get a treat, which was seldom. Yeah. But I mean, right, I but you do understand eat. this is a pretense in a commercial. Okay. That all right. Was made then, by. Then don't attack me on anything else other than what <laughs> I said. Okay. What do you be doing? No. Come on. Give it a rest, okay? <laughs> I, I, otherwise, I'm leaving now. <laughs> I'm buying that argument. <laughs> what do you think about this? Well, I, th I think uh, it's um, attacking the family and yeah. traditions and values, and it shouldn't be allowed. It, it, just, it just is unnecessary. That's right. 100% unnecessary. I love what you said. It should not be. Uh, we'll do it. We sh Let me just finish this. It should not be allowed. That's the thing. It shouldn't be allowed to be done to mothers, and it should not be allowed to be done to fathers. And so what is wrong with America that we are allowing this to happen? You know, even the men who, who I guess they need money, I, 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 you know, but what type of mentality do they have that they would do these types of uh, commercials knowing the impact that it's having on the family and on men and on children and on the mothers. You know, what, what's their mentality? I remember there was a woman who offered me money to, um, to be a part of what they were doing in her group, but the woman was so dishonest and evil, I just told her, no, I'm not, I'm not taking your money. You know, I'm not doing it for your money. We have to stay with truth. We have to do what's right. And these people are selling the truth down. They're selling the families down the drain for a dollar bill. And they're going to spend that dollar, that money, the next day, but the image will still be out there. It will still be there, and it, and it will affect the family. Did you have something different to say? Uh, yeah, I was, I was just going to conclude with... Um you know, we don't, we, don't, we don't teach our kids ever to strike their parents. You know, even the Bible says if a, if a child true. curse their mother and father. Yeah, you that's know, let another. Them, let, them be, let them be destroyed. Yeah. No, he's not referring to you now. I mean, he's talking about I'm the just commercial. saying that, that I just, the, the, the premise of the whole commercial was completely off. But yeah. I just, you know, where the, a, a dad would go feed himself and almost like torture his kid like, it's really good, Jesse. I, I, you know what I've got in here? I've got some cranberries, too, and you know all the stuff that you like to put in there. But you can't have any. And, of course, you don't understand anything because, you know, you're just a little kid. You want the ice cream. One interesting thing that they're doing while attacking their fathers, I don't know if you heard about this or not, is that the military is now... Oh, I wrote it down so I could be correct about it. The military now is now saluting the homosexuals in the military. They, they are saluting them. Uh, and June, it, um, June is uh, Gay homo, Homosexual Pride Month, and the military is going to acknowledge that and celebrate that in the military. Uh, I saw John Pinella, that's his name? Pan Leon Pinella this morning um, thanking the homosexuals in the military for their great service. I really want to thank you guys for your great service, your, your whatever to the military, right? And I'm thinking, so are they going to eventually single out the black folks and thank them and thank the gays and thank the women and thank, and they're going to leave out the straight folks, the straight white male. And I'm thinking, they're attacking the men while bringing up homosexuality. There's something wrong with this picture. And how did we get to a point that our military would do this. And why don't they realize that they're putting all of us at risk, our lives at risk, by doing this? What is the point of celebrating so-called gay pride? What is, where's the pride in being gay? That's like, you know, people can say, I'm a rapist. Are we going to have rapist pride day? <laughs> you know, what is wrong with America? I know what's wrong. I just want you guys to tell me. Kelly, you had your hand. Um, 
Yeah, well, on that point um, about uh, people in the military, it's also just totally um, like disunifying the military, and that's one of the most important things is having this unity, and they're singling out people. <clears throat> and I guess they've done this for minority groups in the military before, is my understanding. They so, had Black Day? Um, I don't know particularly, but I read an article that suggested that they've done this for other minority groups. So you're basically splitting up the military by these, and it's, it's really detrimental. So if they do it for the gays, they're going to have to do it for the pedophiles. Happy Pedophile Day. Happy, uh, happy Cure Your Parents Day. Because we have all kind of sin amongst us, and you're going to separate the sins. Uh, it, it, this is a crazy world. Isn't this like a crazy world, or just me? And I, it's really crazy, but I'm, I'm just wondering, how do you compare the two? to um, other groups of people. You, you know? don't, but they do. Yeah, yeah you don't, but they do. Um, let me ask you did, you, did you have a good relationship with your father, Wayne? Yeah. What was it like? Um, was it like? I mean, we, we had a good relationship. I mean, you know, he, he wasn't a bad dad or anything, you know, but he was kind of kind of hands off, you know, he kind of let, let me do what I wanted to do, you know, he wasn't, you know, on my case all the time, that, that type of dad, you know, but at the same time, I don't think he spent enough time with me, you know, as a kid when I was coming through, yeah. you know. And so when you say hands off, meaning that he didn't correct you or, yeah, he, or whoop he, you, he, he did he ever whoop me, you? But I'm saying he wasn't extreme when it came to that. Oh, okay. You know? Were you close to him? Uh, no, not really. That's yeah. what I meant about him not spending enough time. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, did you ever talk to him about that? He's still alive. He's still alive. Oh, he's still alive? Yeah, he's 95. What, 95? Yeah. And so, have you ever spoken to him about that? Like, uh, Dad, you weren't there for me. I needed you to be, we, yeah. for us well, to be he's closer. he's a Jehovah's Witness, man, so, you know, it's a different breed. They don't believe in being close to their children? Uh, well, during the time that he was coming along, men just didn't deal with men like that. You know, they didn't hug their kids, they didn't tell them they loved them. You know, that was just the way it was. Right. You know, those, you know, back in those those days, you know, that's the way. And you felt like you needed your father to hug you? Uh, it wouldn't have been a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I suffered from it, him not doing it, you know, but it's, it's just the way it was. Yeah, I've kind of come to understand that. That's the way he wasn't the only one. I mean, it's just the way it was. Yeah. You know? And when you had boy problems, teenager problems growing up, did you talk to him about those? No. Who did you talk to? Oh, I didn't talk to anybody about it. <laughs> you just worked it out yourself? I worked huh? it out myself. I know what you mean. Yeah. Wow. And so, can you have this conversation with your father now? Because it's a blessing that he's still alive so that you can work it out. Well, I don't, I don't think it's a problem. You know what I mean? I, oh, you don't? Mm -mm. Oh, okay. It's not a problem with you? No. Do you think maybe a problem with him? Maybe he's wishing he had done that, but not even to talk about it because no one would bring it up? I don't know. He's kind of a, you know, he keeps a lot of stuff to himself. You know, as he's getting older, he's kind of telling me about his life and about things that he's done when he, he things that he did when he was a kid, or right. when he was a younger man. And, you know, such as me having other brothers and sisters, you know, but I'm like, why are you telling me about that now? I mean, they're, they're <laughs> older than me, so they're probably not even here anymore, you know. Ninety so, years later, he tells yeah, you got exactly. brothers and sisters. You know, it's, <laughs> you know, okay, like, Dad, you finally speak up, and this is yeah, what I you mean, tell me. He could have kept it to himself, you know. <laughs> if you were to tell me about it 40 years ago, it would have been something different, you know. Maybe he wanted to just get it off his chest before he died. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so he know, tried. I, I think he's, he's, uh, saying more now because my mom has passed. I think when she was living, he just, you know, it was just off the table. He wasn't going to bring any of that stuff. And why is that? Uh, because my mother was, uh, she was a very jealous woman. Oh. And, um, I mean, he had one daughter that we all knew about, and she just ran the girl off, you know, when she came to visit, you know. So we just, I guess he just didn't want to stir that up. Anymore. Oh, I see. Yeah. So he had... This daughter, while he was married to your mother, no, before I her, I don't know. To be honest with you, I really don't know. I know know that the girl was. Well, it had to be before any of 
my brothers or sisters were born because she was older. Yeah. But I don't know if it was before they were married. So. But this is why you need to have this conversation with him to know these things. And these kind of things are very difficult for families to discuss. But when you don't discuss them, they stay hidden and they bring on confusion in the family, animosity, and well, because they're unanswered questions. Yeah, but I know at this age, I mean, what difference does it make, you know? Well, I don't know. You're still living. Yeah, I understand. And you may that, live to be 100 or something. <laughs> I know, but I said I don't think it's going to... It's going to add anything one way or another, you know. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> How many people agree with that? Christine, you agree? Do you agree, Raymond? Oh, yeah? Um, you agree with that, Rodney? The wife? With his dad, yes. You do? And why is that? His dad won't talk about stuff like that. He, but he look like no he's trying to talk about a little stuff. All he talks about is religion. That's about it. That's it. And really, the Bible. I mean, he can't talk about anything else. He really can't. Oh. Doesn't. And Wayne, do you communicate with your son the way that your father communicated with you? No. You deal differently with your son? Yeah, I, I try way? to, yes. I'm sorry? I say I try to. But it doesn't work? Um, it's working now, you know. I mean, you know, me and Wayne have had our issues. Right. Yeah. But so you're trying to deal with him in a better way than your father dealt with you? Yeah, I'm trying to... Uh, I'm trying to have a, a bigger part in Wayne's life than my father had in mine. Oh, yeah. okay. I'm trying, yeah. you know, I'm really just trying to guide Wayne in the right direction. I know he's a, a man now, you know, but I'm trying to help him see things a little differently. By doing what? Just talking to him. About issues and stuff? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Christine, why do you disagree with that? I mean, why do you agree with Wayne that it's not important now? They're both old, and why bother? Okay, well, he and I are, the, like, the same vintage. My parents are about that age, and you're probably about 60. And, uh, you know, in the 50s, that's the way parents pretty much did. You read O'Reilly's book. That's the way his, his dad was. He does, Wayne doesn't seem to have any problem with this. Why would you bring it up for a, a, an old man of 95 who, uh, you know, um, probably doesn't think about this either. I mean, it's, it's uh, like, what's the point? I, I just don't understand what the good would be. Oh, okay. Interesting. What do you say about this? You, you agree with Wayne that his father's 95 now. Uh, don't bother bringing it up. Wayne is about 94. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody old now. Why bring it up? Uh, the, the, the young guy. Well, I, I think he he would know best. He knows his father, right. and, and whether or not it's that's that's a an effort that's that's worth trying and going down that road. And uh, and again, it's, it's what's in his heart, and if it if it's important to him to address that with his father, if, if he needs to, I think it's it's more important that uh, you know based on his experience, he's doing things that he thinks are right with his son. So that's more important now than probably the past. Oh, okay. And your father's still around? No, my father passed away. And what was your relationship with your father? It was very good. He passed away when I was 12, but uh, I have very good memories, and for that short period of time, yeah. uh, he was involved, and, and it's also from that generation of the 50s, but um, so, you know, men yeah. were different, families were different, but uh, he, was, he was involved, so... Um, so your father left a good impression on you? Absolutely. Because he had a good relationship. Oh, good. Did you have a stepfather after he... No. No, no stepfather. That's good. That's real good. You love, you love your dad? You have children? Uh, I do not. Not yet. You, how old are they? I do not. Oh, you do not have them? No. Oh, okay. All right. Good. So you agree with Wayne if, it's, if he uh, thinks they, they're too old now, don't worry about it. Just die like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I think he knows best on, on whether or not. Yeah. Oh, okay. He should right. or should not. Yes, ma'am. I I don't agree. I mean, I think if you can talk about it, a lot of times the older people have, have a lot of things that they haven't talked about, and it'd be good if you bring them up. But just in his father's case, you know, he just 
he's just like one straight road. On, it's about religion. Even you can't even dis, you can't even disagree with him about religion. Yeah. He just goes straight back to the Bible. That's it. That's all he talks about. But I mean, even at 95, you know, if you start talking about some things, you might hit a nerve somewhere. Yeah. And you might bring something up that he might, you know, tell you how he feels about it and how things didn't work out. My dad is uh, really into the Bible like that too. I called him the other day and I said, Hey, Dad, how you doing? Oh, fine. He was like totally happy to hear from me. And he went right into the scriptures. <laughs> I was like, you know what, Dad? I don't want to hear this right now. I just want to talk to you. I know what Jesus said. <laughs> and he's 80 years old. And I said, oh, you didn't call me on my birthday in May. He said, oh, oh, I forgot. I think he's going to see now or something. And he said, oh, yeah, come. my birthday is in May. I said, no, Dad, your birthday is in January. <laughs> Your birthday is not in May. Um, so do you agree with this? That, yes, right, right here, Robbie, the blue shirt. That uh, Wayne, you know, they're both old now. Why bring up artists? Well, I think it would depend on the, the receptiveness of the <coughs> father. Because, see, my father just died nine months ago. He was 94. And, uh, nine months ago he died? Yeah. Oh, okay. And, uh, but he still had all his senses uh, up until... But, uh, and I would discuss things with him, but just whatever was working, I would talk, and sometimes he'd open up and talk a, a lot about things, and, and I just thought that was good for him. But, yeah. but whatever, you know, there's things he didn't want to talk about, like, uh, for example, my mother, he, he never had anything good to say about her. But he didn't, how long were they married? They were married for, I think, about 12 years. Uh, back, uh, they got divorced like in 1956 or something. Right. And he never had anything good to say about her? Uh, I don't know. As he got older, he had worse, you know, had, <laughs> had less to say about her. Less, less good things. Well, uh, do you blame him? No, I'm kidding. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think he had some reasons, yeah. You do? Yeah. Like what, for example? What type of mother, what type of wife? Uh, well, you know, I mean, I was a child when all this was happening in the 50s. You know, I was born right. in 1947. Oh, okay. So when they were breaking up, like, 56 or so, you know, so I was about eight or nine, whatever. Right. So I saw through those eyes, and I, I did, looking back, I saw that there were things that she might have done that would uh, piss anybody off, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, were you close to your father? Uh, I, yes. Uh, both, both my mom and dad. Yeah. They, they, they divorced, and my mom got remarried, and uh, <laughs> my dad never remarried, and, uh, but we were always on good terms. You, For the you, most part. You and your father? Yeah, we have our little problems here and there, but we were always in pretty good terms. Were you close to your mother? Yeah. You real, were you real close to her or just somewhat close? Kind of, and then they all said, we're, there were six kids, and they said uh, the one that resembled her most was me, you know. Oh, well, you were too close then. <laughs> I was about to say, it's not good to get too close to your mother because you become like your mama. Right, but I wasn't talking about my behavior. I was talking about physical appearance. Oh, mm -hmm. is your behavior like your mother too? Uh, I really don't think so. But <laughs> mm -hmm. you don't think so? Um, do you have anger? I really don't. You don't have anger? No. You don't have any anger. A anger? Uh, yes, anger. I, I don't believe I do. Oh, okay. And how did you avoid having anger? Did well, you have it at one point in life? Well, I mostly handle stuff my whole life. Uh, just, you know, uh, I, well, I don't hold grudges and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I never really did. Yeah, um, I was like that too. I went through a lot growing up, but I didn't really hold grudges against people. Mm -hmm. I didn't like what they did sometimes, but I didn't hold the grudge. Mm -hmm. The only people I had gr held a grudge against was my mother. And I didn't know I, then I was holding a grudge. I just had some resentment for her because of what she did with my father and me you know, tried to turn me away from him. Mm -hmm. I held that. And so, but you had no grudges against anybody, not even your parents. Uh, yeah, I don't recall that being in my mind. Oh, good. Yeah. And so have you ever been married? Are you married now? Yeah, no. Well, I, I got married. Uh, he's my, this is my son. And Oh, it is? Yeah. And uh, I, I didn't know, but. You ain't know he had been married before? No, I just can't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, the one I married is his mother. <laughs> Oh, you married his mother. Yeah. And how was that? Why are you not married now? Why we're not married now? Uh, we just, uh, 
could get long, I guess, you know. Uh, um, and so, are you close to your, your, how many children do you have? Well, I have three from, uh, with his mother, and I, I had a, a younger daughter who's 20, going to be 25 now from, you know, this after. And are you close to your kids? Yeah, all of them, yeah. And they can talk to you about anything that they're going through? Yes. Oh, well, oh that's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Because that's what kids need. They need to be able to, com to uh, communicate with their fathers. Yeah. And fathers should be uh, giving out good answers. Mm -hmm. Is that true? Well, I've always tried to, you know, you know, give wisdom. Or, you know, I have more experience. And yeah. whatever I know, I try to pass on to them. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Good, man. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask this because of time. You have something else to say? The next thing we're going to start in? Yeah. I just want to say, <laughs> it's kind of funny when you say, well, you should get these discussions going, you know, in the family. They, they may start out as a discussion, but within minutes, <coughs> there are counter accusations and, you know, it, it just blows up a yeah. lot of times these, when you try to bring up old stuff. Yeah. And that's really what people are trying to avoid. You know, even at the risk of just let them go to hell, you know, it's... They just, just avoid don't want the have conflict, the, the they, arguments. Yeah, they want to avoid the conflict because... How sad is that, a, huh? There's not just a sane discussion that goes on between family. You know, it yeah. usually just blows up to a Catskill and McCoy type of thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, I, um, I, I didn't grow up with my father. Uh, as I said before, uh, my mother got pregnant when she was... Uh, about 16 or 17, and my, when she told my father about it, he denied that he had made her, impregnated her. And so uh, she became angry at him, and they, uh, she ended up marrying my stepfather before I was born because it was an embarrassment to have children out of wedlock. Today is not an embarrassment. You can have as many as you want. You can have... <laughs> you can have... <laughs> As many as you want to have a baby shower, everybody floats over, and, and where's the man? Oh, that old thing out there making a baby with somebody else. <laughs> no big deal now, but it was an embarrassment then. But my mother tried to uh, keep me away from him. She didn't want me around him because she was mad at him. And even though I had a stepfather who was a, a nice man, he really was a nice man, I did not want a stepfather. There was nothing inside of my body that was desiring a stepfather. I wanted my father. And so I really never accepted this guy as my stepfather, even though he was nice to me. Um, I had a void inside of me, an emptiness, uh, because I didn't have that love of my father. And as a kid, I knew that it was because my father wasn't there. And so when I would ask people about it, why am I feeling this way? They would say it's something else. But I knew I wanted my father. But she hated him and didn't want me around, around him. When I became a teenager, they moved up north to uh, Indiana, and I stayed down in Alabama with my grandparents. But when I would go to Indiana, I would sneak around and see my father. And it was hard for me to do it because the little town was so small. Everybody knew everybody. Whatever you did, people would find out. <clears throat> but I would sneak and see my father. I remember once my dad came to Alabama, and I was a little kid. And my grandmother uh, told me that this was my father because she knew I was wanting him. But she made me, t you know, promise not to tell anybody that she had told me. But he came to town, came to Alabama, and he came to see me. And I remember him coming in the house. And I was a little boy, and it was like it was everything I needed. I, I looked like him and everything. It was like it was everything I needed. I was so satisfied to see him. And then when he left, it was like the light went out again. And so when I would go to Indiana, I would sneak around and see him. Um, um, but my mother still hated him, and I, I finally forgave my mother for hating him and for what she had done to me. And, you know, God gave me peace. He satisfied me because I didn't have this resentment for him anymore. But uh, my mother hated my father, and I, I would tell her, you need to stop hating him because you don't want to die with all this hatred in your heart of my dad. And she let years go by and hated my father. And 
So I told my dad, I said, you need to call her up and apologize, and he did. And, but she still would not forgive. And finally, my mother forgave my father. And a week or two later, maybe a month, she died of a heart attack in the bathroom. She just died just like that. Isn't that amazing? And I'm thinking she could have died with this hatred in her heart. But because I told her the truth, even at the risk of her getting mad about it, it finally gave her something to think about it. She did it. So about the conflict, let the conflict be, but at least put it out there. Put some truth in there. And they may not accept it right then, but somewhere down the line, they may accept it. <laughs> and uh, this was like, how many years ago? Oh, it was exactly 25 years ago that this took place with my parents and I. And um, now I can talk about my dad, I can talk with my dad about anything. And it's nice to talk to him about anything because I see now he has a lot of unresolved issues in his life and I'm able to help him deal with those issues in his own life. When I go back there now to visit, he's married to an, an, another woman. <laughs> I like the lady though, just in case you guys are watching. <laughs> I really do like her. <laughs> Did you and your stepdad ever get, get it together? Yeah, um, my stepdad tried to be, you know, my stepdad really tried to be nice to me. Mm -hmm. Two things happened that he did to me that will stay with me, I guess, forever. Um, I have uh, six sisters and five brothers. And my older sister and I had a fight one day when they were living in Alabama. And we had this fight, and she started the fight, right? Uh -huh. And my older sister is his, is his daughter. And so he gave me a whooping. I said, why are you whooping me? She started the fight, and I held that against him. Because I thought he was whooping me because, you know, I was his son and she was his daughter. I later apologized for that. But then just before he died, after I changed, he called me up and said that, you know, he had um, sickle cell disease. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he was dying. And he called me up and said that he was dying and that I was the only sane one in the family. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. That's... And he wanted me to look out after the family. You know something? Yeah. And I was surprised by that, that he would say that to me. So there was a like animosity between us uh -huh. because he really did try to be a father for me, but I just didn't want him. Yeah. I had a hunger for my real dad. Uh, I do, before I take some more questions or comments, I do want to say you're making an awful mistake by not talking to your father and working this out now while he's alive. Um, Satan is telling you that he's old now, why bring up the issues? You know, it's not needed. That's Satan telling you that. It's a blessing to be alive, to work out your resentments so that when you die, you have a chance to be with, with the I, Father I in heaven. Resentments but he made them. Yeah. It's not about you. It may be about him. Like my dad is opening up to a lot of things that he was going through that he held against his parents and that he hold, holds against his sisters and brothers. And I'm, a, I'm able now to tell him, Dad, you need to let that go. Just like you couldn't help yourself, they couldn't help themselves. And you don't want to die like this. And my dad is so, maybe I should, should I say this about him on the TV? <laughs> <laughs> my dad is so filled with rage, he's very emotional. You know, he would cry and stuff like that because he's filled with this anger that he has not resolved. And one thing I know about him now he definitely appreciate me dealing with this stuff with him. So it, it may not be for you. Maybe you don't need it. And life is not about us. It's about our fellow man. And if you could get some dialogue going with your parents, if they're 190, you need to do it. Even if you just start the dialogue up and listen to him, because your dad has have, have never had anyone to just sit and talk with him without judging him. Most people judge when you really show your weakness, you know? And you may be the son that won't judge or the daughter-in-law that don't judge. And that will help free him up. It is a lie from the pit of hell that just because he's 90, that he shouldn't deal with these issues. I, 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 because it's a spiritual battle that we deal with. We are a spirit. And Satan doesn't want us to die as free men and women. He wants us to die with resentment and hatred in our hearts so he can own us forever. And he's telling you that about your fathers. 
and your mothers. If the mother's alive, deal with it. I, I absolutely disagree. My dad is 80 years old now, and we still talk. How's your daddy 80 years old? Now? Huh? How's your daddy 80 years old, and you're older than me now? I'm older than you. I'm older than, <laughs> I'm older than my dad. I am. I can't hardly believe it that I'm 63 and my dad is 80. I'm like, what? Did you have me when you were 10 or something? But yeah, it's like that. But you don't let Satan, don't let Satan deceive you that you can't be of some spiritual help to your father. God's love is very, very powerful, and it can destroy evil. And by you talking to your fathers at 90, 190, and they just getting it out, letting you know what went on, you never know what God will have you to say to him that can change his life just like that. And then he'll die, you won't regret what you've done. Mm -hmm. We're not supposed to have the truth within us and then decide who's going to accept it, who's going to hear it, how old they are or not. We have to just put it out there and let them deal with it. That's a deception from Satan to say that about your parents. Yes, Roger? Yeah, because Mecca comes and talks to him and he tells her about his father and he doesn't understand why his father, you know, didn't love him and do things like that. So he's opening up. He might need another 10 years. Yes. But he is opening up. So, so Wayne's dad talked to Mecca about how he's feeling. Mm, some things, yeah. Some things. Mm. You may not even have the answer for him, but the fact that you talk to him and bring it up and ask questions, you'll open up his heart and then he can get over that stuff. So be careful when Satan tell you in your mind. I think a lot of reason that people say, oh, they're too old now, or they may not accept it, is that you don't want to deal with the conflict yourself. Because to bring up this kind of stuff, you're going to be feeling uncomfortable. And then if they overreact, you got to deal with that. I think it's a cowardly way out. Because people don't know how to deal with conflict. You got to learn how to deal with conflict. Conflict makes you better in life when you deal with it because you show love, you, you see where you are in life, and uh, it helps both parties sometimes. Sometimes it won't, but sometimes it will. I am thankful to God that he kept my father alive long enough so I could work out these issues with him. There is nothing like working out the issue with your father. I'm telling you, it's nothing like it. And I don't know what I would have done had my father died before I was able to forgive him and deal with him. Because if you don't love your father, you're never going to know God. It's a spiritual thing. The man represents God on earth. He is Christ on earth. And if you don't love him, you'll be miserable the rest of your life. Whether you go to church and read the Bible, hoop and holler, pay your money, you're going to be miserable. You got to love your fathers. And you, I don't know, you can let it go by if you want. But I say if you want to be free, you got to deal with it. Come right here, Rob. You have to deal with it. Um, yes, sir. Um, <clears throat> Wayne, you don't know how blessed you are, man. Um, forgive me if I break down. I was born out of wedlock. Didn't even know my father. Yeah. And my father told me who I was when I was 14, 15 years old. My mother kept me away from it for various reasons. But even to this day, and I'm 70 years old, I still have a little empty void about it because I never got a chance to really be around him, can't talk to him, can't call him up. Earthly men are very important to other men. It doesn't matter, like Jesse said, it doesn't matter how old they are, yeah. as long as they got their noodles. Uh, uh, you can correct certain things and you cannot because that's a couple of men I go to and talk to them. They're in their 90s. But if they got their noodles, run something by them. See how it comes back. You know, get, get, don't, don't, like you said, don't, don't miss that opportunity yeah. because if you, if you had a father, I didn't have one. I hear what I, I was around kids that had fathers, man. You would be surprised at empty void that's missing, yeah. you know. And I couldn't raise my kids because I wasn't around a father. I had to tell them, hey, I, I would. I, this is the way I was raised, female head of household. This is all I know. I, have, I, I apologize. That's all I could say. See, so I made mistake with my kids. You made mistake with yours, but at least you could go back to your father and say, hey, man, what happened here? What happened there? Uh, why is this? Why, whether he answered or not, he's there. He's alive. 
you know. Yeah. So take heed, man. Don't, 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 like just said, don't avoid it. Yeah. That's all I have to say before I break down. Be, because you, you know, you made such a good point. I can always tell men who have not had fathers, uh, even if they had lived with their father, if their father was weak and pathetic, the men are always immature. You know, they act like little boys. They end up, um, they get, even when they're dating or married, they quickly allow their wives to become their mothers. They submit to the wives just like that, like a little boy. Because what you don't understand, because we didn't have that father to guide us, we only had the mother. What we do is go from mother to mother. That's why it's so easy to submit to, to, uh, <laughs> to, uh, to women because they're just going from mama to mama. They are very immature, but if they had a father who loved what's right, guided the, the family in the right way to go and set that example, when they get married, they wouldn't act like little boys. They would act like men. And women would love that because now she can look at him and respect him because he's not acting like some little boy. You know, he's acting like a man. But if the father's not there to, to pass that on, how can that happen? It happens through the father. One of the reasons we are having all these attacks in these commercials and things like that is because of who men represent. The men represent good. They represent God on earth. And see, evil understand that. And as I said yesterday in the men's conference, which was excellent, by the way, uh, you ladies missed it. It was a packed house. And <laughs> And if we had ladies calling up, can I come? No, for men, men only. But it was something else. But um, 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 Satan understand, evil understand what's going on. And evil, Satan hate men because they represent Christ on earth. And so they are going after men. They want to destroy them, embarrass them, make a mockery of them, make them angry, so they can fall away from who they represent. Because as long as men love God first, more than anything else, he's going to treat his wife and children in the right way, and then they'll be fine, and, and Satan can't get to them. But if Satan destroy that man, which he's doing, it's over for everybody. It's over for the family. It's over for the country. It's over for everything. And that's what's going on. He's working through these people to destroy the spirituality, the spirit of man. Because man, is, I saw it happen with the black community. You know, black people prior to 50 years ago was all right for the most part. Then the government came in, put the fathers out, or they left, and, and corrupt people took over. And the average black man today isn't worth a dime. Not one iota. He's girly, he's weak, he's emotional, he's doubtful. He's having sex with everybody and their mama because he's trying to find peace within himself. But it wasn't like that. We had some of that, but it wasn't as it is today. And now it's happening to the white men, the Hispanic men. Satan is destroying the man for a reason. It's not a game. He knows exactly what he's doing. And as men, men are so, I don't know, men are, but they don't know what's wrong. They don't know they need to forgive their mothers for turning them away from their fathers and that they need to forgive their fathers for not being there to protect them from their mothers. They don't know, and that's why we got to tell the truth about this, because get them back in order, God in Christ, Christ in man, man over woman, women over children, everything will come together again. It really will come together again. Let me do this before I come over there. Uh, what was your relationship with your father? In the black dress, Robert. Robert Pinch, he has on a black dress? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have to get somebody else for the mic. Um, now, Robert's going to have a nerd. Look at him. I, Robert, I, do me a favor. Come around on the other <laughs> side. Um, my, um, I don't have a relationship with my father. It's, you know. You don't? No. And... But I have a great relationship with my stepfather. And, you know, I mean, 
I've, this has come across my heart many times, very recently a lot, about speaking to my father and yes. trying to resolve things. Yes. But uh, it's hard. I've got a lot of anger. And it's not just because of what had gone, I had gone through not having him around, but just uh, my mother, what he put my mother through, his lack of care for my sister who was mentally ill. So there's a lot yeah. there that I have issues with. But I, God blessed me with the best stepdad that I could ever have. He's yeah. my dad. But um, I didn't appreciate him till I had kids of my own. And then, you know, I, yeah. I went down the road that many young women go through. And But, I mean, thank God I have a Savior because yeah. I don't think I'd be in the right place now if I didn't. But isn't it interesting that you have a stepfather who appears to be a good man, you love him, but you still have this desire for your father? Yes. Yes, yeah. I do. I yeah. do have a desire for him. And you like know I why? Said, it comes across my heart yeah. very often. Because your father is your son. Spirit. He is your identity, and no other man can fulfill that. So, what I, is your father around? You could. You um, could my father. He lives about. Actually, my sister lives with him, and oh, okay. so they have a great relationship. Yeah. But um, I just, I never had a good one with him. Here's but. what I highly, highly, highly recommend. And if you can do it today, it'll be even extra because it's Father's Day. Well, he's in Detroit. <laughs> Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, he's not out we're, here. Yeah, we're, oh, okay. we're Detroiters. <laughs> uh, oh, good. You left Detroit to come here? Oh, yes. God bless you. <laughs> you got out just in time. <laughs> because Detroit, <laughs> Detroit is a rat right now. It, it's, it's terrible. Yeah. It's, it's awful. It's terrible. It's, it's despicable, just the behavior. I know. It's bad. Well, here's what I would do. I recommend it. I would go to my father. And I wouldn't accuse him of anything. I would just ask, what happened? What caused you not to be there? Why did you do this? You know, I, I needed you and I still need you. I still want. And then hear him out. Don't, don't yell. Don't, because if you yell at him and go off and carry on, he's going to resist it because he already feel like everybody's judging him, like he's the bad guy. All the kids judge him and all that kind of stuff. And nobody ever gone to him like I'm tell, talking to Wayne about and say, Dad, what happened to you? You know, why, why did you leave? Why weren't you there? Why didn't you help my, my brother or sister with the problem? And hear him out, it would change your life just like that. It would cause you to forgive him because you will see his issue and have compassion for it. And then you can go free as well. And at that point, you can apologize for holding things against him. That's all, and you'll walk away free. That makes sense? A lot. <laughs> you owe it to your soul to do that. So you can be free right here on earth. Otherwise, you're going to screw up your kids. You're going to pass that anger down to them, and that's the last thing you want to do. But because you hate your father and you're separated from God, you don't have that uh, unemotional love to pass down. You, don't, you only have emotional love to pass down that comes from anger and resentment. Real love is not emotions. It's not what you think or feel. It's what is right. And that's what you want to pass on to your children. But you're not going to be able to do it until you can forgive your father. He could not help himself. He feels exactly what you are feeling. And, and, and if you can understand yourself, it will help you understand him. Will you get out a try? Yes. Yeah. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. Go do it for your own soul's sake, and you will forgive him. And God will forgive you, and you will become a free woman. And if you need me to go with you, I will. <laughs> All right? Let me go right here real fast because I'm running out of time. Somebody. Did that help a little bit? Go ahead over here, Rob. I'm sorry. Go ahead. That helped a little bit? Okay. Two uh, in the yellow shirt. Yellow shirt, Rob. Not in front of the guy. Come around. Oh, thank you. Um, so what's your relationship? We have about two minutes left. Hello. What's your relationship with your dad? With my dad? Uh-huh. Um, it was messed up, but most recently I, have, I, had, I had to rely on him for uh, different things because I had uh, problems. And, and so uh, I was able to talk to him recently. 
So I think we're on better ground in regards to reality. Have you, we have a minute, I mean, a half a minute left. Are you, have you forgiven your father for the things that you resented him for? Uh, I pretty sure I'm almost done with that. If, I, <laughs> if not done with that. Yeah. If you were done, you would know it because you would be free. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm not. I don't know. Yeah. So what you got, I recommend today, since it is yeah. Father's Day and you guys are together, when you sit today and talk, be very honest about those things. Mm -hmm. Not with the intent to attack, but to get it out so that you can forgive. Right. Yeah, just be absolutely honest, and you be honest with him. And I'm telling you, you would never be the same. You got to love your fathers in order to love God. The Bible says, how can you say you love God who you've never seen and hate your father who you see? You got to forgive. Happy Father's Day, everybody, and thank you guys for having me. For more information, to purchase a copy of this program, or to make a donation, visit us on the web at bondinfo.org or call 1-800-411-2663. That's 1-800-411-BOND. You're already home.